Section A is 10 marks, reading section. Section B is also Section B will have two writing situations and you will have to attempt only one. Okay, plus your choices. And, uh, look at the passages carefully for the choices. So, uh, internal choice, not even your literature, also you have choice from your literature questions. So, you have shorter questions and your long ones. Uh, uh, yes. Short term and internal choice, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, internal, yeah. internal, internal. Right, not uh, overall in the section itself, but for a uh, short, uh, there would be a separate. And uh, what's your problem, please? Where is your book? I mean, I'm in a book. <laughs> Very sad state of affairs. I think nobody wants uh, you to sit with them. No, I think Mehul and Rahul can share the book. Let him sit alone. <laughs> so, yes, you will start reading with the chapter The Necklace. What is it about? It's about a young lady. Matilda herself, and uh, she was uh, very pretty, and uh, she was not very happy with her life, right? So she was born into a very average family, and uh, she did not have a dowry, and uh, as a result, what happened was that she married into a family of clubs, and she was quite unhappy with her situation. She dreamt of a better life, of, uh, you know, having a good life, but that was not possible. Now, one day she got this opportunity, rather her husband brought an invitation that was for a very important function. And very few people there from his office, they got this invitation. So he showed an invitation and she's not happy at all. That what will I do going to such a place? I don't have a proper dress to wear. Her husband, very hard working, he's tried to save a every penny and as much money as he could and he offers to give her the 400 francs that he has saved. What did he want to buy? Well, a car for himself. But he said, okay, buy a dress for yourself. And something not uh, too, you know, like showy, but something that she can wear later on. So she buys a dress, but even then she is unhappy. Why is she still unhappy? Because she doesn't have any jewels to wear with the dress. Her husband uh, suggested to wear natural flowers. But she says, no, it will not look nice at all at a formal function. And uh, he reminds her that she has a rich friend, Madame Fristia. And uh, although whenever Madame uh, LaSalle went to a friend's place, she was always unhappy when she came back because when she saw the riches that she had, the beautiful dresses that she had, it made her unhappy. And, uh, but now she's quite, uh, you know, happy with the suggestion her husband has given. So she goes to her friend's place and her friend shows her a lot of uh, jewels, you know, pretty things she shows her, right? Uh, the pearls and uh, Venetian cross and bracelet. And in the end, uh, she shows her a box which has a diamond necklace. And she's very surprised that her friend has allowed her to borrow it. So she wears a dress, she looks very pretty, everybody compliments her, and she has a nice time. It's quite late when they get back, and uh, so they go looking for a cab, uh, and her husband has to walk a bit also till they, you know, get one. And uh, when they reach home, Madame Lazelle thinks, let me take one look at myself in the mirror. See how pretty I was looking, and these days, again and again, I might not get an invitation so soon, and a chance to look pretty. When she looks at her, herself in the mirror, she shouts out, she gives a scream. Because what has happened? She lost. has lost the neck. She's not wearing the necklace and the necklace is lost, right? And uh, yes, yeah, so what kind of a necklace was it? It was a diamond necklace and uh, going to be expensive. And how are they going to replace it? So let us see here what is uh, Matilda going to do and how are they going to find the necklace or are they? Yes, so let me please uh, look at the book of the screen as it goes a bit. Hmm. 
Loisel already half undressed asked, What is the matter? Found the page. Go to yes. What is the matter? So, because she screamed and shocked, she could not see the necklace. She turned towards him excitedly. I have, I have, I no longer have Madame Forestier's necklace. He arose in dismay. What? How is that? It is not possible. What has happened? We lost the necklace. How? How did it happen? Naturally, they are very simple people. How are they going to repla replace the necklace? And they looked in the folds of the dress, in the folds of the cloak, in the pockets, everywhere. And maybe by mistake, you put it in the pocket. Somewhere it was not there. They could not find it. He said, he asked, are you sure you still had it when we left the minister's house? So are you sure you had it or you left it over there or it fell down? Yes, I felt it as we came out. So it was there around my neck when we came out. But if you had lost it in the street, you should have heard it fall. It must be in the cab. Yes, it is possible. Did you take the number? No. And you? Did you notice what it was? No. Generally, we don't notice these little things. It's only when a problem arises that we remember we should have been a little alert. So she's lost the necklace now. They looked at each other, utterly cast down, upset. They're very upset. Finally, Lazelle dressed himself again. I am going, he said, over the track where we went on foot to see if I can find it. So he's got rest and he's going out and uh, of course they came back quite late. So he's going out and said, I'll walk on the path and see if I can find the necklace. It's late night, nobody must have crossed that way. My, there are chances I might find it. And he went. She remained in her evening gown, not having the force to go to bed. So even for Childa, she kept on sitting, waiting for him to come back. Towards seven o'clock, her husband returned. He had found nothing. He went to the police and to the cab offices and put an advertisement in the newspapers of the You can see, they were not aware of it. You are aware, you read the story in advance. The poor thing, see here, this is like, yeah, very sad for them, isn't it? She waited all day in a state of bewilderment before this frightful disaster. Loisel returned in the evening, his face pale, he had discovered nothing. So what were the actions taken by them to recover the necklace? He, you know, went to the police, put an advertisement, he visited the cab office, all the things he could do to find the necklace. Now they are simple people, honest people, hardworking people. And naturally here, it is going to be very difficult for them to replace the diamond and necklace. Write to your friend that you have broken the clasp of the necklace and that you will have it repaired. That will give us time. So he says you write to your friend that you've broken the clasp of the necklace. Clasp, with you tie the necklace? So it's broken, you're getting it repaired. So at least you'll get time and then till then you'll be able to find the necklace. Maybe which chapter are you reading? You? Two books now? <laughs> she wrote as he dictated. So both are worried, they need time. And what if their friend starts asking? At the end of the week, they had lost all hope. And Lozelle, older by five years, declared, we must replace this jewelry. What do you mean older by five years? In one week, he had grown old? What made him grow old? The loss of the necklace? The thought that how are we going to replace it, right? How is he going to buy a diamond necklace? Where is he going to arrange the money from? We must replace this jewel. In a shop of the Palais Royal, they found a chaplet of diamonds which seemed to them exactly like the one they had lost. So they went to this uh, place and to a very expensive shop and they found a necklace that looked similar. It was valued at 40,000 francs. 
See, he had been working for so many years and had been able to save 400 francs. How is he going to reach 40,000 francs? They could get it for 36,000. So yes, there's some discount there. Loisel possessed 18,000 francs, which his father had left him. It was his inheritance, right? So maybe money which his father had given him. He borrowed the rest. He made ruinous promises, took money from usurers and the whole race of lenders. So he's made promises, I give me money and I'll return it in so much time. And he's borrowed a lot of money. Naturally, 18,000 he had, 18,000 he's borrowed. Then he went to the new, get the new necklace, depositing on the merchant's counter 36,000 francs. When Madame Lazelle took back the jewels to Madame Forestier, the latter said to her in a frigid tone, you should have returned them to me sooner, for I might have needed them. So like, of course, after one week or more than that, when she went to return the jewels to her friend, what did she say? Then why are you late? You should have come earlier. Madame Foresti did not open the jewel box as Madame feared she would. Why was Madame Lazelle afraid that uh, Madame Foresti would open the jewel box? What is she afraid of? She will identify whether the necklace is. Where are we reading? Which page? So right, to you know, Madame Blosel, she was quite happy. Okay, fine, she didn't open. Otherwise, if she had looked closer, she might identify. Now that when uh, I go back home and then she can open it, and then of course, there's no problem here. What would she think if she should perceive the substitution? What should she say? Would she take her for a aroma? She's worried. What will her friend say? She finds out okay, this is not her necklace. This is something else. Right? They've replaced it. So will she say you're a thief? Will she scold her? So she's worried about that. Madame Lazelle now knew the horrible life of necessity. Earlier she was leading a comfortable life. It was not a bad life, it was a comfortable life. But now they don't have any savings, they don't have money. So her life is one of necessity. She did her part, however, completely heroically. It was necessary to pay this frightful debt. How much debt did they have? 18,000 francs they had to pay. And uh, yes, Madame Lozelle did not cry or complain about this uh, terrible debt they had. Why? She was ready to support her husband. She was a heroine. She was very brave, right? And uh, helping her husband to, you know, like she was also doing her part. She would pay it. They sent away the maid. They changed their lodgings. They rented some rooms in an attic. Changed their lodgings, the house they changed. They went to a smaller house. They had a maid earlier to do their work. Now they've stopped her also. Okay. She learned the work, odious work of a kitchen, the tiring work, the difficult work of a kitchen. She washed the dishes. She washed the soiled linen, their clothes and dishcloth, dishcloths, which she hung on the line to dry. She took down the refuse to the street each morning and brought up the water, stopping at each landing to catch her breath. And clothes like a woman of the people. She went to the grocers, the butchers, and the fruiterers with her basket on her arm, shopping, haggling to the last sou of her miserable money. So she did all the household washing the clothes, cooking the, the food, right? And even carrying water. And she would go to buy the fruits and vegetables also. And she would argue for each and every penny, right? She would not waste a single 
amount of money. So, right? So she saved as much as she could. So this was her contribution. This is how she was helping her husband, right? So she is there doing the work and she is taking a big responsibility. And someone who was there, you know, quite proud of her looks, that I am beautiful, I'm pretty, I should have a good life. Now she has become a brave lady. And she's decided that fine, I'll send away the maid, we can shift to a smaller house, and I can do the household work. Madame Nazelle, the husband worked evenings, putting the books of some merchants in order. And nights, he often did copying at five sous a page. And this life lasted for 10 years. At the end of 10 years, they had restored all. 10 years, they worked very hard, right? So, Madame Lazelle, taking care of the house. Monsieur Lazelle, what did he do? He was working in the evenings also when he came back from office. And then he would also do some extra work also. At five sous a page. So, saving every penny. 10 years, they worked very, very hard. And then at the end of the 10 years, they were able to repay the money. Mademoiselle seemed old now. See, but Monsieur Lozelle seemed he's grown old in one day when he could not buy the necklace. And even Madame Lozelle also is old. Why? Because she is there doing very hard work. She's not uh, sitting inside comfortable doing nothing. But she is there working, washing, and yes, carrying water, doing all the household work herself. She had become a strong, hard woman. The crude woman of the poor household. Crude means rough. So she was not a delicate lady anymore, but she was a rough, hard-working, common woman. Her hair badly dressed. So she's not bothered about her appearance also. Her hair badly dressed, her skirts awry, her hands red. She spoke in a loud tone and washed the floors with large pails of water. Pail is bucket. So she did the household work and she is quite strong because of it now, right? And a changed person. She's not a delicate, soft person, but she's a loud, hard-working lady. But sometimes when her husband was at the office, she would seat herself before the window and think of that evening party of former times, of that ball where she was so beautiful and so happy. Sometimes she would think of that beautiful evening, maybe the last good evening of her life. How would it have been if she had not lost the necklace? Who knows? How singular is life and how full of changes? How small a thing will ruin or save one. So in one moment, things can change. So one incident happened, the life changed. In 10 years, they worked hard to repay the debt, right? And that life is never going to come back. Those days are never going to come back. One Sunday, as she was taking a walk in the Charles Elysee to rid herself of the cares of the week, she suddenly perceived a woman walking with her child. So one day after her hard work, she was just taking a walk and uh, she saw a lady. It was Madame Forestier, still young, still pretty, still attractive. Because she was not doing any hard work. She was not cleaning her house, washing the dishes. So she was there leading a comfortable life. Madame Lazelle was affected. She was touched, you know, and thinking, what should I do? Should she speak to her? Yes, certainly. And now that she had paid, she would tell her all. Why not? So that day she was afraid. She should open the box. She might see it's a substitute. She might realize a change. Now she says, I repaid the money. I don't have anything to hide. I don't have anything to worry. So let, I, if I meet her, I'll definitely tell her. She approached her. Good morning, she. Her friend did not recognize her and was astonished to be so familiarly addressed by this common personage. Her friend did not recognize her because she has changed. She's not uh, delicate and beautiful anymore. She has become very strong and she's not taking care of her looks, even her appearance also. She stammered, but madam, I do not. You must be mistaken. I don't know you. No, I am Matilda Loisette. A friend uttered a cr 
cry of astonishment. Oh my poor Matilda, how you have changed. What's happened to you? You're looking so different. Yes, I have had some hard days since I saw you and some miserable ones and all because of you. So she's blaming all her misery on her friend. It's because of you my life has changed. Because of me? How is that? You recall the diamond necklace that you loaned me to wear to the minister's ball? Yes, very well. Well, I lost it. How is that since you returned it to me? I returned another to you exactly like it. And it has taken us 10 years to pay for it. You can understand that it was not easy for us who have nothing, but it is finished and I am decently content. So she's telling, I'm being honest. I've told you I lost the necklace and see, we worked very hard to repay the debt, to repay the money, but now I'm very satisfied. Madam Forestia stopped short. She said, you say you bought a diamond necklace to replace one? <laughs> Nothing funny, it's so sad. Yes, you did not perceive it then. They were just lying and she seemed so happy. She didn't recognize it. I gave a very similar looking diamond necklace. And she smiled with proud and simple joy. Madam Forestia was touched and took both her hands as she replied. Oh, my poor Matilda, mine were false. They were not worth over 500 rands. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't get her life back. She can't get her days back. Her, her beauty, her youth, 10 years of her life she has lost. And uh, who would you blame for this uh, incident? Madam Forestier or Madam Lozen? Friend? Guy de Mopasan. Silent D is Mopasan. French, 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 French. French. Right, okay, yes, who would we blame for this? Uh, Lozelle or Forestia? How was uh, Forestia responsible? Because, yes, yes, you should have told her that uh, this necklace is not a diamond necklace, it's a fake one. And even Madame Lozelle, she should also have thought of borrowing, you know, something so expensive. So if you borrow something so expensive, you have to be very, very careful about it. And uh, of course, as she wanted to look pretty, she wanted to show to the rest of the world her beautiful uh, necklace and dress and jewels. But in the long run, she had to suffer. You listen to me now. What's the lesson? Check before you take it, you ask whether it is fake or real. See, I think so. Yes. Be careful with what you borrow. Okay, very good. But isn't it better if you don't borrow anything? Why can't you stay with what you have? We should be content with what you have. You don't have a jewelry. Why do you want to wear and show to the rest of the world? Yes. Yeah, she would have worn flowers. She would have followed her husband's advice and worn that also. Right? But yes, just to show, just to look beautiful to the world, we should not end up causing problems for ourselves. But what about Madame Lozelle's behavior? Did she ever complain? She cooperated. She worked hard, yes, yes. and uh, she did her bit, you know, like by adding to the sales, to the, real, the reality of life. Otherwise, she lived in a daydream. She kept on thinking about beautiful things. And now she knows how hard it is. You have to work to get those expensive and beautiful things, right? Thank you, Sarah has taught us a very important lesson.
No. What? 